college football playoff, there are two major storylines that are the backdrop to this weekend, as far as I can tell. One is the SEC's Texas problem, and the other is the committee's FSU quarterback problem. Let's start with the Texas problem. The Southeastern Conference has been a staple of the top of college football for a couple decades here. And I mean, they've always been near the top. And you could argue year to year. It used to be more of a back and forth argument about which conference was the top. Then the SEC kind of rolled, ruled the roost. The Big Ten has made a strong play as number two. But in the playoff era, it's been SEC, SEC, yeah, SEC. Always. But we've got this weird roadblock for them. This strange roadblock. Georgia's back-to-back defending national champion, which keeps getting brought up. And I use that term. But you know what it should have to do with this year? Nothing. Now, it might impact the respect that people have for the program. But when choosing the playoff teams, what Georgia did last year or the year before, in my view, should have absolutely nothing to do with their standing this year. I agree. Now, do I think in part they might be number one because they kind of started there and just haven't shown a reason not to be there? Maybe. But anyway, Georgia's number one in 12-0. and Michigan's number two at 13-0. and Washington three at 12-0. and I'm sorry, Michigan's 12-0. and Washington's 12-0. and Florida State is four 12-0. and So one, two, three, four, all 12-0. and Oregon is five at 11-1. and Ohio State six, Texas seven at 11 and one, Alabama eight at 11 and one. So these are hard to do without the numbers in front of you. But let's just, if Michigan wins and they're a heavy favorite, they're, they're 13 and 0, they're in. Yep. Is the winner of Washington and Oregon assured a spot? I think so because Oregon is at five. So yes. Okay. So that's two spots taken up. Yep. If Florida State wins and is 13 and 0 in a Power Five conference, are they in? I think without question. I know there's there's debate about the because the quarterback is hurt and he got hurt two games ago. Since he got hurt, they went two and zero. They scored fifty eight points in the first game and they just won the rivalry game. And then they have a game uh, this weekend against Louisville, who's ranked fourteenth in the country. So if they beat Louisville to go thirteen and zero, I think they're in. And there's not even don't have to debate about the quarterback. And situation. we can debate about the quarterback situation later. But let's just say they're 13-0 and 0 yep. and they've got a spot. Yep. And if Alabama beats Georgia, which is possible, Chaos. And, and Texas beats Oklahoma State, is Texas the roadblock? that? Because if Alabama beats Georgia, can Georgia still get in? Or do they have... Can they not get in over Alabama because Alabama won the head-to-head? And if the case is yes, then how can you put either of them in because Alabama lost to Texas? Well, because here's what – I guess if – let's start with the premise that Alabama beats Georgia. Then Alabama should absolutely get in ahead of Georgia because they'd have, they both have 12-1 and records and the head-to-head would be, well, Alabama wins. So Georgia's on the out. Now, does Texas get in – over Alabama because they beat Alabama. It's the, the same, it's the same the kind of argument. If the reasoning is Alabama over Georgia because Alabama won the head-to-head and they have the same record, then it stands to reason that Texas over Alabama because they have the same record and Texas won the head-to-head. Now, what's interesting is that you look at the quality of loss, okay? Who would have the, be- the best win? I mean, does Alabama's win over Georgia would supersede, you would think, Texas's win over Alabama, but just – but if Slightly. Alabama, but if I, I know, I'm just, I'm, just trying to, Georgia, I'm just trying to talk this through. Okay, but if I, uh, I'm, right. just, I'm just trying to talk this through. So you want me to pause? Just please, thank okay. you. Um, you look at what Texas has done. I think Texas's resume is better than Alabama's. I think Texas has beaten better teams than what Alabama has beaten so far this year. Um, and I say that quickly. I mean, Alabama beat Ole Miss. Ole Miss is good. They beat them twenty-four to ten. They beat Tennessee. They beat LSU, who's good but not great. Not in the top 25. Right, and they beat Tennessee, who's good but not great. So They are in the top 25. Um, and they barely beat Auburn. So Alabama would have three wins over top 25 teams. Tennessee, uh, what do we got? Tennessee, Ole Al- Miss. 
And LSU. Georgia. Well, yeah, LSU. So they had four wins over top 25 teams. I'm sorry, LSU is in the top 25. That's my bet. If it's me on the committee, I'm saying Texas gets in. And it's not just to, to slight the SEC. I'm actually an Alabama fan. I love Alabama. This team. Or I love just Al- in general. I love, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Alabama. What Saban's done there, I think it's 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 just fun to watch, and I I I'm a big fan. But I don't think they would get. I don't think they deserve to get in over Texas because the committee has set it up. It's interesting, you know. Texas is ranked seventh, and they're they're playing a game just like Alabama's playing a game this weekend. Now they're not playing Georgia, but they're playing a pretty good Louisville team who's ranked 14th right now. And looking at those overall resumes. You know, what is the the strength of schedule and how does that all work? And, you know, for me, it's more of an eyeball test than it is a mathematical formula. Because I think you can really have to go so deep into mathematical formulas with, you know, seeing what, well, you know, what any teams mathematical were, formula, were healthy and what they weren't. There's lots of stuff to go in there. getting into mathematical formulas and it's it's just somebody that put together a mathematical formula like it's it's not it's one person or one committee's idea yeah. of a mathematical formula which is essentially replacing all opinion which i don't think you should do in fact it's kind of a cop out if you ask me which is it's, why they have a committee yeah now then there's the florida state quarterback problem because florida state put up 220 yards in squeaking past florida and this gets into, all right, what's the goal of the committee? Is it the four most worthy teams? Because if Florida State wins this weekend, I think the argument that they are one of the four most worthy teams is valid. Or is it the four best teams? Because if it's the four best teams and Florida State, again, struggles offensively this weekend but finds a way to win over Louisville, it's hard to make a case that Florida State going into the playoff without their starting quarterback who broke his leg two games ago, it's hard to make a case that Florida State's one of the four best teams. So is the committee looking for the four most worthy teams or the four best teams? Because I think your your argument that Florida State is worthy is is valid. I think what they've done over the course of the season says they deserve a shot. But if they're looking for the four best teams, I don't think Florida State without Jordan Travis, if they struggle again offensively, would it's hard to make a case that they'll be one of the four best well, teams. Again, this gets into an area where I, I, I think too much emphasis is placed on what the quarterback does. How's the defense? Because Florida had like 230 yards in offense in that game as well. They weren't very – Florida State's defense was was dominating. Florida State's defense this year has been very good. So I'll take that into account. And I think it's it'd be reprehensible to say Florida State doesn't get in if they win this week. They'd be 13-0. and 0. What do they do wrong? What, because their quarterback got hurt? Guys get hurt all the time. If this happens in the beginning of the season, you know, someone misses a few games, but they still get through those games and they win it, then they're, they're like, oh, it's okay. But because it happens at the end of the season, it's a season-ending injury for the kid. Now it's like, oh, no way. You, can, you can't tell them they can't compete. It's not That's completely unfair. And I thought the committee, when they made the move to back out Florida State in the top four a couple weeks ago, when they put Washington at four and Florida State was five, I thought the committee said specifically it had nothing to do with the quarterback situation. It was just that Washington's coming off a pretty impressive win. Now, I thought it smelled the BS, but if that's what they're going to say, you cannot – throw this quarterback situation for an undefeated team if they stay undefeated. I think everything plays itself out. Look, if if Louisville wins, fair enough, then Florida State's out. But if Florida State beats Louisville, a top 15 team, with their second string quarterback, I don't care. They win the game, they're undefeated, they belong in the top four. Well, if you look at Florida State, when they when they made that comment, I think they were speaking specifically as to why they dropped him down. It had nothing to do with the quarterback. It had everything to do with Washington's impressive win. But, you know, there is protocols. There's a, a committee protocol that says, talks about their criteria and says the criteria to be provided to the selection committee must be aligned with the ideals of what the commissioner's president, athletic directors, coaches to honor regular season success. Well, at the same time, providing enough flexibility and discretion to select a non-champion or independent under circumstances where that particular non-champion or independent is unequivocally one of the best four teams in the country. So they do take into account 
in other circumstances, hey, if a team's one of the best four teams in the country, we're putting them in. And if Alabama takes care of Georgia and Florida State squeaks past Louisville, and I had to ask you, who do you think right now is a better football team? Would you say Florida State? I'm taking myself out of this equation. All right, well, <laughs> two four eight well, five no, three nine ninety seven. Because I'm, I'm, I'm arguing the other side, and I, I I'm, I'm not going to. I mean, if you're, if I'm putting myself on the committee, and the committee's looking for the four, I would be a, the, the the biggest holdout in the world. There's no way you're going to tell me an undefeated Florida State doesn't deserve to be there because two, they've done everything in front of them to get there. They put up 58 points against you know whatever crappy team they were playing a couple weeks ago, and they get passed up because Washington beats Washington State by two points or Oregon well, State by two Oregon points. State, yeah. So that that's dramatic enough. I mean, that's a big enough win that well, Washington's got to move up. Well, last I checked, Florida State is number four in the country right now in the college football playoff rankings. That's four spots ahead of Alabama. It's three spots ahead of Texas. So if they take care of their business. Doesn't matter. They should be in there. It's a it's a debate to, between best teams and most deserving teams, and I, I, I mean the committee's got they're going to send their message if this scenario so, plays itself out. So is that a week in week out thing? It's always the same criteria. I suppose. So if it is, then why wouldn't you know? I I would argue Oregon's better than Florida State. Why isn't Oregon ranked uh, fourth? And you know because they have a loss. Yeah. So so it matters to be undefeated. Uh, it, it's part of the criteria, yeah. 